gentlemen. Welcome to Walking with Jabo. Once again. I don't know how many episodes of this I've done. But I'm sure it's quite a few at this point. Anyways. go for my walk tonight somewhere between five and six miles if you have missed the past couple I did uh, five miles last night a little over and I did nine miles the day before and six miles five miles and I'm not sure what else feels a little cooler tonight but the I was gonna wear a long sleeve tonight but I know I'm gonna get sweaty by the time I'm done walking so I'll start off cool with just a t-shirt. It's about 65 degrees. Dew point is about 62 degrees. And the humidity is about 70, 60 to 70 percent, I believe. So it's kind of comfortable. So I watched a press conference a little while ago with uh, former President Trump talking about food prices, things that matter to people. Pretty good sized press conference. Took a lot of press questions. Kamala Harris has not taken a press conference. She has not spoken away from a teleprompter except for two brief moments in the past 25 days since assuming the candidacy for president. And the polls are starting to reflect that because she's going down in the polls already. It's like I knew she would. Most people knew she would. She was polling 10 to 15 points behind Trump while, while Biden was the candidate. They were doing those polls ahead of time in anticipation that maybe Harris would be the candidate. Biden was about five or six points behind Trump. And if we had some honest polling, you would see that Trump is about five points ahead of Kamala Harris right now, which uh, she is, uh, he is in a, a few, a handful of polls. But the media has not been in too much of a hurry to issue new polls. They're waiting till after the Democrat convention on the 19th. And there's a reason for that. They did come out with the New York Times Siena poll, which has Kamala ahead four points in all the swing states. That's a manufactured poll. It's a BS poll. Pay it no mind. And, uh, this is the tactic they're going to take, try to whitewash the public. Um, from what I can tell, it's not really working. It's starting to lose ground. So 
So like I said, it's coming around. We're gonna get through the uh, DNC convention coming up and we'll start to see things straighten out after that. They're already starting to straighten out, I guess is my point. Fox News has her ahead by a point for the first time in a while. And uh, they are not friends of Trump. So we're doing okay, kids. No worries. So this is a chest mounted camera today because pretty soon it's going to be dark and I'll swap over to the night mode that I made on here. Excuse me. So we're going to keep on keeping on, as they say. Endeavor to persevere. So I hope everybody's having a good week. Looks like uh, we'll have good enough weather to go shooting Saturday morning. Good enough, not perfect. gets dark I'll switch over the camera setting you might even be seeing some picture anomalies now kind of blurry spots from movement uh, that happens with this setting with the less amount of light So it's really funny that Trump do, is doing these press conferences. He's also going to be doing another space uh, um, interview on X with Elon Musk. He's going to do another one of those coming up. Don't have an exact date on that. But things are looking good. Hang in there, folks. 
got to remember, we got the full media machine churning 24-7, anti-Trump, anti-Trump. CNN has been editing clips shamelessly again. The same kind of thing that got people to stop watching them before. So, whatever. If they feel like that's a good strategy, then so be it. So it looks like they came by and picked up all that wood they cut and those trees they cut down. I'm gonna miss those trees. They were just happy little trees minding their own business. Looks like they took that one too. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about a dozen trees. They took. They stole them. Get off to the side here. Heading on down the highway. Watch out for that big truck. The big truck. see any deer tonight. Sometimes we've seen some deer here. Nothing tonight. So Kamala Harris has a scripted network interview scheduled for the 27th at the end of the month. And that's it. She's not doing any press conferences to talk with the media. Shameful. That's not a winning strategy. So apparently the Trump strategy is going to be hammer her on socialism, communism, the economy, young people can't pay rent, can't eat. Some people are holding one or two jobs and they can't afford to eat and feed their four, four or five member family. Um, we saw an interview with a black mother who was going without eating uh, to feed her kids. And when we grew up, that's what my mom did. We grew up mainly in the 70s. We didn't have money. The economy was terrible in the 70s. And uh, there was times my mother would have bread and milk sandwiches. Uh, bread and milk. You'd just 
tear pieces of bread off and put it in milk with a little bit of sugar and that was her dinner because she made sure we ate so it looks like people are back to that again watch out for this car I don't think they see me saw me at the last second so up ahead here I'll switch over to the night lens all kinds of acorns on the ground tons of acorns I think we're gonna have a bumper crop of acorns again towards fall in the books according to the woman screaming in my ear got that too loud again Doggy. Hey puppy. Stay out of the road. with the garage door open, smoking a cigarette. She probably don't let him smoke in the house, which is actually a good thing. Smoking is bad for indoor stuff. Staining walls and whatever. Place smells like an ashtray. And if you smoke, you don't notice it too much. But if you don't smoke, it stinks pretty bad. So we'll go down this way with less traffic. As soon as it's a little darker, I'll switch over. So we got new security cameras being delivered for the bat cave. Highly recommend people getting those. You can record video on micro SD cards or cloud space. And you can set it for motion activated so it only records and turns on when something triggers it. right here is losing leaves early look at this it's mid-august I don't know what that's all about it's the only tree I see doing that maybe it's got a fungus night over here 
I already saw one recycling bin that has a jug I'm going to pick up on my way back. Looks like a three gallon container. warmed up now because I've been walking so the no sleeves actually feels good right now So basically this election is going to come down to economics. Who has better economic policies, which we already know that's Trump. Heavily favors Kamala Harris in that department. We've seen a couple of media fluff bowls trying to say the otherwise. But that's ridiculous. Trump today hammered the fact that she's an incumbent. She's been in the White House. These are the Biden-Harris policies. So, the media is getting sucked into picking everything Trump says apart, micro-analyzing, and it's the same thing that happened before. It makes people talk about him and not Kamala. It makes people go check out what Trump's policies actually are. And, uh, you know, the Project 2025 20, nonsense really hasn't caught on. The leftists, you know, they're still talking about it like it's a thing, but I'm not seeing anybody else talking about it. Really not. They're really trying hard to make it a thing. And a lot of the Project 2025 stuff is stuff that Republicans support anyway. So there's the radical stuff in it, which there is a couple things, but not, nothing really worth talking about. So it's all, again, it's signs of desperation. They're really desperate to find something that will stick and trying everything because they know they're losing it's really the bottom line polling is leveling off and starting to change in trump's favor right now so we're right in that process but basically this election is going to come down to the economy and people right now that are anybody but trump just reminded me of that when i walked by that sign just now it's uh, one of those things where there is a legitimate part of the population that does not like Biden and they don't like Trump. And the media is trying to coax them over to voting for Kamala by saying that new polling has shown that these undecideds are choosing Kamala. And they're trying to say that there are mega people abandoning Trump, and that's just the most funniest thing ever. You're just not going to see that. You just won't. Once the hardcore realization sets in that Kamala is a socialist, and they're going to push California policies, they can't just miraculously make themselves look like you know, moderates. That's why uh, Trump said today, again, he mentioned uh, Tim Walz is signing the tampons in boys' bathroom for schools, which he did. Just to let people know that they're radicals. 
it's not a popular thing with most of the country. Somebody that has California politics is never going to get elected nationwide. And that's why I know the polls are rigged. And uh, Trump is leading by about five points right now, best guesstimate. And he's going to increase from here. So. I think right now, Republicans are doing a decent job getting around the media's propaganda. That's really where the battle is going to be. And uh, I think we'll get there. Word of mouth, that sort of thing. Uh, Trump having a TikTok account is very important. Because we're going to reach a lot of these young people that have been duped. Probably pretty good people. They just have bad information. So I think it's almost time to swap the camera over swap it over we're gonna swap it over folks around the corner here I'll probably go across the street to do that yeah I'm sweating pretty good right now be back in a minute hang on to your undies folks I'll be right back all right I am back back for the attack and yes I know everything looks a little blue it will until it gets completely dark But anyways, I promise I won't get lost today like I did a couple days ago. That was kind of fun though. Ended up walking three miles more than I wanted to. But that was good for me. People still have air conditioners on, but it almost feels nice enough not to have it on tonight, but not quite. That'll be coming soon though. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of unsettled weather coming up. A couple of days where it's going to rain off and on. I'll pick and choose when I walk in that mess. If it's warm enough, I'll walk in the rain. You've seen me do that before. I don't like walking in the rain if it's not warm. It's, uh, that's the thing. Anyway, pretty happy tonight. Happy with how things are going with the Trump campaign. A lot of people were anticipating that Trump was going to fire some people or fire the campaign manager. But uh, polling is doing what was expected. That was the plan they had for the last three weeks. They knew as soon as Kamala Harris was picked or installed that there would be a bump on that side. And the media really went out of their way to try to make it Obama 2.0. All this crazy talk about the, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread and FDR and everything else. And, you know, as the old saying goes, what was true yesterday is true today. You cannot polish a turd, okay? Now, Trump, whether you love him or hate him, he's not afraid of the media. He doesn't duck and hide. He says what's on his mind. Sometimes it gets him in a little bit of trouble, the way he says it. He's not a polished speaker like that. But that's why we like him. What you see is what you get. 
Kamala Harris only appears with scripts, teleprompters. Everything is pre-arranged, pre-approved, questions ahead of time, which they're probably going to do that for the debate. And I guess today the Kamala campaign agreed to two debates. So they finally agreed to a second debate because Trump basically said, you know, let's do three. So they were like, okay, well, we'll do two. Two debates might be enough for the public to get the point, I hope. And we're going to have a presidential, a vice presidential debate. But like I said, today is the 15th, okay? Early voting starts in Pennsylvania tomorrow, the 16th of August. Way too early. Way, way too early. Should not be starting early voting before we have any debates. I just think that's a terrible thing. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, and I explained it in my last walk. Let's say, let's say Biden was still the candidate. And, you know, they've been hiding him from the media, like they are with Kamala right now. And then, uh... Early voting starts, all right? And then after early voting starts, people start casting their ballots. And uh, guess what happens? We see what Biden did in the debate. And people can't go, oh man, I want my ballot back. I wanna change my vote. Biden is terrible. The Republicans were right. I don't want him for president. Well, you can't go back and do it over. I really think early voting like that is a terrible thing, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. That's Pennsylvania policy, and that's it. That's the way it is. But Kamala can't win without Pennsylvania. So, fortunately, fortunately, Trump is leading in Pennsylvania despite the fake polls. So, it's basically Trump's election to lose. Kamala Harris, I mentioned this in my other walks, um, Trump's also leading now, more solidly in Wisconsin. That's kind of a toss up in Michigan. That's not quite defined. North Carolina should go to Trump. He's ahead there by about three points. And he's ahead in Georgia. He's also ahead in Nevada by quite a bit. I'm actually quite surprised to see that. Now I'm not talking about the New York Times poll. Just ignore that garbage. And that is what it is. <clears throat> because they have that DNC convention on the 19th in four days and they want Kamala to go into that steaming ahead okay so this is all propaganda the kind of stuff you'd see on Pravda Russian television state-owned TV which is basically what we have with news networks here Democrats own the networks I'm not talking about literally but figuratively the big donors that donate to Democrats and want power are the ones that own the networks. So, perfect example to show what I mean is they wanted Biden out. The polls all of a sudden had Trump ahead, blowing the doors off Biden. Oh no, panic. Trump is winning. We need to get rid of Biden. Truth of the matter is, is Kamala is right about where Biden was right now. It's all a matter of perception. And the other truth of the matter is, is Trump right now with favorability, um, 2016, he finished up five points better than what the poll said, uh, nine points. In 2020, he finished up five points better than what the poll said. And he's doing about the same now. And his approval rating is more, is higher now than it was in the other two elections. So his approval level is higher 
So, it doesn't take a scientist to figure this out, okay? Kamala Harris was horribly unpopular when Biden was the candidate. The only thing that's changed is Biden stepped down, he's not gonna run, and people don't want Trump to be president. They know Kamala is still terrible. That's the point I'm making. And as election day gets closer, they're gonna realize more and more that, yeah, I don't like Trump, but at least I could afford to eat when he was president. So, uh, the other big news today that has Democrats alarmed is that the price of food has gone up again. So Kamala's campaign issued a statement saying that companies need to stop price gouging. So they're gonna try to blame the companies like Biden tried to blame the oil companies for gas prices. It's not price gouging, that's gaslighting. That's, that's the definition of it, really, gaslighting the public. So, the higher prices go up, the more it helps Trump. Uh, the other good piece of news I saw was that Frank Luntz, longtime pollster, not particularly a fan of Trump. Uh, he's already said he's not voting for Trump. He didn't vote for Trump in the past. I think he's going to this time. But he said that the unions have declared that their opposal to Trump and they're endorsing Kamala. But he said the actual workers in the union have rebuked the union heads and they're with Trump. And he said that from his polling he's done among union members that the union members are supporting a Republican, which is Trump. There hasn't been this much support in decades, he said. So the working people, the tradesmen, the people that work with their hands are heavily in favor of Trump. And those are exactly the people he's trying to get in Pennsylvania. So that's just the way it is. You know, if you're a Kamala supporter, I'm sorry, but, you know, you're going to win all the metropolitan areas and the know-it-alls with the college degrees, but the working man is not going to vote for you. Sorry, it's not going to happen. People like to afford to eat. I'm tired of being sold to BS by the Biden-Harris ticket. And it is the Biden-Harris ticket. She's an incumbent. She's in the White House now. None of these things that she promises to do, she has championed since being vice president. And today, Biden was asked what he would do if Kamala, because of her election, denounces Biden's economic structure. He goes, oh, she won't do that. She's not going to do that, he said. So there you have it. Right from the horse's mouth. You know, and Trump, uh, he was asked, Biden was asked, what do you think about Trump saying that people can't afford to buy food and it's too expensive? And Biden's reply to the media was, well, he ought to get a job. That was his reply. The most ridiculous thing ever. So it's basically saying, um, okay, you people out there that have two jobs and you can't afford to pay your rent and you get roommates and you can't afford to eat and you can't get your own house, just go get a third job. Stop complaining. It's basically what he's saying to these young people. Really terrible messaging. And that's gonna catch up with them. It's starting to now, so. I feel really good seeing Trump rebounding right now from Kamala's bounce. And she is going to have a slight bounce after the convention if it goes well. We still don't know what's going to happen at that. Probably nothing. Probably just be a ceremonial thing. 
and uh, they're going to pitch their LGBTQ plus A2 whatever alphabet garbage and uh, it's not going to attract any independence. I know they're going to screw the pooch. The media is going to say, oh, this was the greatest convention. It outdid the Republican one, and that one was excellent. I mean, you already know their propaganda ahead of time. It's so pathetic. So, so we'll watch that stuff. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens at the convention. I think I'll watch uh, some of the media coverage of it. Not all of it. I'm not going to watch the whole thing live. I am going to watch clips from it. I hope somebody on it says something really stupid. It's always possible. It's always very possible with these people. Whew. Yeah, I got a sweat going. Weather looks good tonight. I checked the weather radar, nothing in the neighborhood like last night. It was nice to get my walk in a little bit earlier than I did last night. I got two and a half miles in now, according to the lady in my ear. me. Felt like I was going to sneeze. Oh, this person don't see me. That's nice. What the hell are they looking at when they're driving? Really good question. Central Station. Now it's almost dark. Not quite. some trash out tonight. Put that out. 
tonight. Hi, how you doing? Good and you? Not too bad. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, they had a couple of news articles this week where Republicans are outperforming in Pennsylvania in signing up, signing up new registered voters. Four to one. We're outpacing the Democrats in registering new voters. Four to one in Pennsylvania. Now, there's reasons for that. Uh, a lot of them is a lot of these Republican gun owners don't vote. They've never registered to vote. They love their guns and they don't want to be bothered. And now they're realizing that they're going to have to vote because they read the newspapers. And they understand Kamala Harris has been very open and said that she's going to sign an executive order for assault weapons. It's not going to do anything with the Supreme Court. If anything, it'll actually put an end to that foolishness because it'll go to the Supreme Court. And it will be overturned. But, doesn't mean they're not going to try. People are tired of the anxiety from it. Democrats have made no secret about it. And uh, Tim Walls with a over under shotgun shooting quail is not going to change anybody's friggin vote to vote for Kamala to save our guns because she's already announced she's going to take them. So the other reason is um, a lot of evangelicals, which are pretty prevalent in Pennsylvania, don't vote. Trump's trying to get people to change that, and it looks like the strategy is working. The Republican Party is working on that. And then, uh, according to the two news articles I read, one was the Washington Post and one was Newsweek. They said that uh, Republicans are outpacing Democrats in Pennsylvania are registering to vote. Now, a lot of volunteers have been going to gun shops. They've been going to farms, uh, churches. And it turns out there's a lot of people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s never registered to vote. And they're registering. So thank God for that. Uh, another group that really has not really bothered to vote is the Quakers. The Quakers, the Amish. 
in Pennsylvania. And they are registering to vote in big numbers. And they're voting Republican. So, you have to remember three elections ago, Democrats owned Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Montana, uh, not Montana, but Minnesota. Just hit three miles. But uh, Democrats own that. That's what Obama won with. That's what uh, Hillary tried to win with, and she was overconfident. They just assumed they were going to vote Democrat, and they voted for Trump. Trump flipped three of those states. So. He also won, uh, well, he lost Pennsylvania, but a lot of people think he won Pennsylvania, but it was close. Uh, this time he has a bigger lead in Pennsylvania than he did in 2020. And I'm not blowing smoke up your rear end. I'm not making things up. I'm just paying attention to the real polls with the real cross tabs, avoiding the propaganda of it. Math doesn't lie. They're underestimating Trump again on purpose, intentional. The voter suppression is what it's called. And it doesn't look like it's working for them. Try as they may. So that is um, actual information I got today. Outpacing Democrats four to one in registering new voters in Pennsylvania. So polling is not accounting for those people is the other thing I wanted to mention. These polling companies are not all, but virtually all left-leaning. They sample accordingly. So that's why they, you can't rely too much on those, just for a general ballpark. And you have to take at least a dozen of them and figure out your own average. And uh, a lot of these exaggerated ones drag the numbers down by design so that's what they're doing but we're aware of it we're all right it's going to be fun and interesting and really the big mathematical thing that people really really need to key on and they need to really remember that Kamala has to win all of the Rust Belt states. Not just three out of four, not two out of four. She has to win all four because she's not gonna get Nevada and Arizona and she's not gonna get Georgia. So that's just the fact of it. So pretty much their campaign has ignored the Sun Belt. They just went through Arizona and Nevada and they didn't really gain anything out of it. Uh, it made for good video. They were hopping around the stage laughing and having a great time. And then she stole Trump's tax on tips. No tax on tips, which I think um, had some backfiring effect, which it should. Tim Walls is dragging the ticket down too. Usually vice presidents don't matter too much, but that's a big deal. It has to do with her judgment. She chose him. Very pro trans, transitioning children, minors, indoctrination in schools, all of the stuff that independent people, a lot of them don't like. So she would have been better off with Shapiro in Pennsylvania. 
because she needs Pennsylvania. That's the whole point of what I'm talking about. She has to win Pennsylvania. If she doesn't, then she's finished. Toot finito, Benito. Now Trump, on the other hand, he can win just Wisconsin. He can afford to lose Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania and still win because he has Nevada and Arizona and Georgia and presumably North Carolina again. So this is not looking good for Kamala. And people, I'm telling you, you need to be cognizant of that. So it's not going to be a cakewalk for Kamala. And she's not doing anything right now to earn it. So this is all good. This is all good. People are living in a delusional reality right now with this exuberance. And it's starting to wane. This artificially created happiness and enthusiasm is starting to wane. And it's going to be fun to watch. Make sure you have some good microwave popcorn or your own popcorn if you cook it. On election night, I may even do like I did in 2016 when Trump won. I tuned into, uh, I think it was uh, MSNBC, and I watched them melt down over there. And it was pretty funny to watch. So, they were shell shocked. But, you know, here's the thing. I don't think we're gonna know the results of Pennsylvania on election night. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're not because they're pretty much already putting that out there that it's gonna take them a while to count all these votes. But what I'm saying is, is even if they steal Pennsylvania, Trump is still probably gonna win. I guess that's what I'm saying. So, Now, if Trump does lose Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, he'll have 268 electoral college votes and he won't win. So they would have to steal all of those states. But if Trump has a big lead, they're not going to be able to make enough votes to do that. And right now he has a lead. My best estimate from what I've researched is if a candidate is leading by 5% in a state in polling, legit polling, then you can't do like in 2020 where Biden ended up winning Wisconsin by 10,000 votes or Michigan or whatever the hell it was. You know, they made up votes and they made up the difference. When you are five points ahead, um, you know, you can't do that. There's too many votes. They just won't be able to do it. So, and I think a lot of people are going to be watching it this year, watching the shenanigans. They learned a lot from 2020. And there's a lot of things in states they're not going to be allowed to do that they were allowed to do. One of them is in Wisconsin, the courts have ruled, and this will be in play for the election, that Republicans will be allowed inside to overlook, monitor, and watch the ballot counting. especially in the Milwaukee area where they cheated the last time. That's where they got a truckload of ballot drop-off box ballots 
at 4 a.m. And it's rumored to be that most of those were just votes for Biden with nobody down ticket. So, and there isn't going to be anybody that's going to want Trump to win. So, every single trick, lawsuit, legal tactic is going to be tried. They're going to do everything, all right? I'll let you know ahead of time. And they're going to piss people off. And it's going to take a while. But if Trump wins big on election night, even if they can't figure out what Pennsylvania is, he'll still be president. That's what happened in 20, uh, 2016. They were still waiting for voting results from Pennsylvania, but Trump had already won those other states. He had enough electoral college votes. So, you know, while ABC News was not admitting that Trump won, Trump was coming out on stage to accept it. It was a wonderful piece of history I'll never forget. The looks on their faces. And I mean the Trumps. Trump came out on stage like, wow, I actually won. I don't think he expected to win. I mean, he wanted to win, but it was definitely stacked against him. And uh, you also need to remember that uh, seer I told you about. Three months before Trump's assassination attempt, he said he had a vision that Trump was going to be have an assassination attempt on him at one of his rallies outdoors, and that the bullet was going to come close to his head, but hit him in the ear, and he said that it was going to cause his eardrum to explode. Well, that's not what happened, but he did have an ear injury. Close enough, right, you know? Then he said he was going to drop down on the stage on his knees after. And at that moment, he was going to have a new relationship with God that he previously did not have. It would be strengthened, I guess is what he was saying. He said all the legal stuff was going to stop, which means Trump's not going to jail, and most of the experts say he's not going to jail. Mershon is going to sentence him to a jail sentence, but he's not going to serve it on appeal after paying bail. And uh, that case is going to get overturned anyway on appeal. I think most people know and understand that. So. Some of the evidence used against Trump was uh, um, some of the stuff that he said or tweeted when he was president. So, you know, a lot of that should fall under that immunity. Excuse me. And uh, anyway, whatever, that's neither here nor there. That seer was really interesting to watch that video because that was legitimate. That was legit three months ago, uh, before three months before the assassination attempt, I guess I should say. So, I love stuff like that. And he also said Trump was going to win the election. He said the uh, patriots were going to show up and he would be elected. Then he didn't say anything else after that. But it would be too much of a coincidence for it to be a coincidence. Given what we know now, what happened. So. Plus it's a lot more plausible because Trump's leading, leading right now and Kamala's not a good candidate. She just is not. Never has been, and she's not going to be. You know, they can put a polish rag on her with the best polish. Ain't gonna work.
car will walk pretty good now. We'll be coming up on the last leg of it shortly. Got about a mile and a half left. Give or take. So, equipment that I use. I use iMovie on a MacBook Pro laptop. It's a nice laptop, served to me well. I've had it for nine years now, it's awesome. By today's standards, it doesn't have as much storage as more modern MacBooks. But it still runs fast. Things load quickly. I edit video on it. And for the camera, it is a GoPro Hero 9 black. It's not the top of the line GoPro, like an 11 or something. But the 9 has a lot of really good features, as you can see. It records pretty well. I record all of my video in 1080p. If I had a bigger, faster internet and a bigger, faster laptop processor, I would do 4K. But 1080p works out well with editing and uploading time. I'm a huge fan of Apple products for editing video. It's more efficient, it has better codecs. You now, for example, if I want to edit this on a Windows based, usually you have to buy, you have to pay for the codec or download something that has it. And the software that comes with it for editing video doesn't have the video codec that is being used on 30 frames per second camera setting that I'm using. So the regular standard 1080p, that's fine. But also iMovie edits and rips the video at a better video quality than what I have on Windows. So, so this is what I'm going to use. The moon is out. Kind of a kind of a half orange, I guess. I can see the face in it. I'm sure you can't on here. listening to the crickets and stuff when I walk. Crickets!
Yeah, so that was some of the big news today about prices of goods. Uh, the White House got a negative report today. I don't think they're very happy about it because it does not help Kamala. Prices of food have not gone down. So... Now the other thing that might cause a problem, uh, you know, something I'm not happy about is I think it was the New York Times uh, had it leaked to them that uh, a Secretary General of the Army sent a submarine loaded with missiles as well as an aircraft carrier group to defend Israel without the president's authority. He just did it on its own. That would be that big black guy you saw wearing a face shield because he was afraid to get COVID because he was old and fat. Not in a good way. He overdid it. He went a little, uh, a little bonkers with the masking and face masks and all kinds of stuff. He looked ridiculous to be honest with you. I guess that's the point I'm making. But uh, he sent a, a carrier and a submarine in case Israel's attacked without the president's authority. A lot of Republicans are up in arms about it today. Who's running the country? Nobody. There's nobody running the country right now. It's like people just don't realize how dangerous that is because the media has not framed it that way to them. So how can people be so stupid to believe what they're watching in the media on TV? So if Iran does a big attack on Israel and a bunch of Israelis are killed, you know, That'll help Trump in the election. Unfortunately, I don't want Trump to get help that way, but that would be a bad military thing for, for Biden. Things could get out of hand really quick in the Middle East. I think they already have, to be honest with you. I don't think there's any going back at this point. It's gonna get ugly. We don't want Kamala Harris in the White House dealing with that. That I do know. And I think uh, historically Americans have made the right choice. You know, they know Trump is very strong. He's not gonna take any crap. Peace through strength. The other thing I was reading today is, uh, you know, I take a lot of time to go research things. Uh, 2008 to 2014, um, Russia mapped out a whole bunch of nuclear capabilities that they have, possible scenarios with um, doing a massive attack on Europe in the event that NATO gets out of hand and attacks Russia. So Russia has plans in place for NATO. And you know, people need to acknowledge that. They need to take it seriously. We're talking about nuclear weapons. Uh, the other thing they never talk about is um, 
When Obama was in the White House, he authorized uh, almost a trillion dollars for revamping our small nuclear arms. Small nuclear arms are arms that would be used for battlefields. Small tactical nukes just used for like a one, one and a half mile radius. Small nuclear weapons. It would wipe out the enemy within a mile and a half radius. Or bigger, depending on what they used. They got different ones. But Obama funded a lot of that. Uh, we have those weapons. The Russians have those. Nothing new. So, technically, Russia could explode a small-sized nuclear weapon in Paris, for example. You know, to send a message. It would obliterate everything in a mile and a half. All hell would break loose after, obviously. But if it gets to the point where, you know, Russia is going to be invaded by NATO, that's it. That's ball game, folks. That's World War III. Russia will not allow that any more than the United States would about allow somebody to invade Texas from Mexico. It's just not going to happen, okay? It's very dangerous what they're doing. I don't mean the Russians, I mean NATO. We have to get these clowns out of the White House. This is very serious. When you have generals sending attack carrier groups and submarines with nuclear weapons on them and missile capabilities in case Israel is attacked, Now, that's not good. You know, and Biden's just a puppet. He's going to say, oh, yeah, I was aware of it. You know, because they told him before the press conference to say he was, you know. He's not here. He's gone. Biden's gone. He's too dumb to know that he was ousted in a coup. Or maybe he's not. Maybe he's got a surprise for us with the DNC coming up. That would be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life if he pulled something. Coming up on four and a half miles up ahead. I'll walk out the rest of this. I don't think I'll take my side route. I think I'll just go straight. Yep. Four and three quarter miles right now. I definitely will have my five miles because I took a little bit of a deviated course at the beginning. So we'll just walk on ahead and then I will uh, sign off with the owl, with the owl. Got pretty good sweat going. something for dinner when I get back.
Beef briskets, $8 a pound. Almost nine o'clock, according to that clock anyways, 8.55 p.m. way. I'm going this way because I got to pick up a pew pew jug that I walked by earlier. A pew pew jug out of the recycling bin. I didn't want to walk this way, but I need to get that. Because I'm going to get to the house and go, oh, I forgot to go pick that up and come back and get it. So. We will just swing by that way. I just hit five miles. So I filled my quota. about, well, I'll have almost six miles by the time I get back. You won't see all of it, but after I pick up my pew, pew jug, I will sign off and say goodbye till the next walk. person was video recording me they actually I could hear them in a conversation so they were doing a video conversation in that car somebody Whew. all right we'll pick up the pew pew jug and head home just about enough pew pew jugs to shoot this weekend too I think. It takes a while to stock them up. 
and you can add to it too. You can go buy some two liters or whatever. Not seeing any deer tonight. That was nice on that last woods walk. Seeing those blackberries are almost ready to eat. The animals will eat those. Okay, we'll go up here. this on the sidewalk. I'm going to put my I'm going to put my flashlight on. I'm going to walk over here because I'm like what the hell is that? I'm going to be sitting down on the sidewalk. my friends was a homeless person sitting on the sidewalk eating something laying on his goods very strange well I told you you walk with me you see something different that's the first time I ever see a homeless person just laying on the sidewalk eating food on this part anyway. So there you have it. Welcome to Lewiston, Maine, the Dirty Lou. So turn this off now. person laying on the sidewalk eating food didn't even acknowledge that I was there I actually wanted to put my light on to see if that was somebody that needed help but I saw he was eating food and, and he wasn't acknowledging me so Well, what do you say to that, really? I'm glad he wasn't the problem. Most of the time, these people aren't a problem. But the other thing is, is a lot of them do drugs. And people that are strung out on meth or something can be dangerous. So, but I have protection, which is why I have it. Peepoo jug here up ahead. I'm gonna pluck that out of the garbage. 
out of the recycle bin, I should say. And go hunting for pew pew jugs. Tidy Cats cat food container. I fill that up with water, and that looks like a pretty good sized pee pew jug for a 3030 or a 308, which is what's going to end up shooting these. I also like the 223 pointed soft points. A very good round for blow, blowing up water jugs. But I'm going to take this out with a 3030 and my vintage Marlin. So that's a good find. And I think I'm going to walk up. Oh, I'll wait till this car turns. Quite the wide turn they took. So, I don't know how much battery I have left. I could stop and check, but I'm almost where I'm going. So, I will just sign off now. And thank you for watching. Thank you for walking with me. And click like and subscribe. Share the content. Tell people about the channel. You can find it on YouTube by searching for JBO. J. And then space. B E A U. You can also find it at, at Megatrends. So. There you have it. Anyways, we'll wrap this up. Have a pleasant weekend week. Tomorrow's Friday. Have a pleasant weekend after tomorrow if you don't join me on my next walk. And uh, God bless you everybody and um, stay safe. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye friends. Bye bye. <laughs>